Hi, on this video, I'm going to talk about my top five keys. I repeat keys, huh? not features. My top five keys on the TI Inspire graphing calculator. Let's find out. All right, the first key is the home key. Some people like to call it the on off key. I prefer calling it the home key because that's the icon that's present there. So why is this key my number one favorite key? Is because, you know, here's where I can find the settings for the calculator. If I need to make any changes, like I can go to the document settings and change from significant figures to decimal places. This is where I need to go and find out if I need to make any changes to the angle calculation mode, whether auto, exact, approximate, uh, leave it at exact right now, uh, or I'll leave it at auto, okay? And uh, what else can I make? Other system changes I can make here for the document. Also, I can actually find out what the status of my calculator is. And this is important because it helps me find out what the version of the operating system is. So if you're watching this and you happen to take a look at your operating system and you know that it is not or it is outdated, then this is the only way to find out. So that is one reason why this key happens to be my number one favorite key. Should I call it favorite or just top, whatever, okay, so number one key. So after the home key, my the next key is right under it. That's my second favorite key. It's called the doc key. So let me go and uh, open uh, a calculate page here. Uh, the doc key, when I press the doc key, as you can see that it gives me access to menus like file. This almost resembles a computer, which is why in the world of TI, we don't even call it a calculator. We call it a handheld, okay? It can do a lot more than what a calculator can do. So you've got menus to open, close, save. You can transfer stuff from your handle to your laptop, so on and so forth via the software. Also, you've got the option on number four to insert a problem and a page. We'll see the differences between problem and a page in some other video. You can also insert a widget in this uh, using this key, the doc key. So it's all under this doc key. Uh, let me come out of this menu. You can also see access to press to test. There are other ways to exit and interpret press to test, but this particular key, doc key, becomes important uh, even from that perspective. Uh, there's also this thing called the page layout uh, where you can go and delete a page if you don't uh, like a certain page or an app that you've opened. So let me just show that, you know, delete it and back to a blank uh, screen, blank canvas, where you can add another page if you want to. So doc key becomes my second favorite key. The third one is right under that, which is called the menu key. Uh, in most of my classes and my webinars, I often refer to the menu key as the lighthouse. I tell my students that uh, the menu key or the lighthouse is like, you use it when you're lost. And if you don't know what you're doing, you know, just go to the lighthouse. The cool thing about the TI Inspire is that the menu is so specific to the app that you're using. So this is a graphing page. And if I go and hit the menu, notice the options that pop up. They're all related to the graph, okay? Uh, under the actions, we've got stuff about the graph, you know, coordinates and equations and blah, 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 uh, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, view options, and then we've got you know, the trace options of a graph analyzing the graph options. So the menu key is specific to the app that is open. In this case, the app that is open is a graph page. On the other hand, say for instance, if I add a calculator page this time, now when I hit the same key, my lighthouse, the menu key, I'll see a very different list appearing. This algebra, this calculus, this probability, okay? Things that pertain to the app that is open right now. The same key producing two different options, all right? Now let's try and open another page, another, uh, let's call it a list and spreadsheet page, you know, something like the Excel spreadsheet. This time I hit the same key, menu key, and look at the options. Can you see that? You know what I'm saying? So the menu key becomes my favorite key, number three, because it is so specific to the app that is open. So that's my third favorite key. My fourth favorite key, well, actually, third key, for many, there should also be the right click. So, uh, you know, this would not be considered fourth. It should still be uh, the third favorite key because, you know, on the handle, if you press control menu, you'll get what's called the right click. So menu gives you something very uh, wonderful as you all saw, but the right click as we have on the computer is uh, the control menu and that itself has got, is quite powerful. So I think menu, another reason why the menu becomes number three. Okay, so both menu directly and control menu. The fourth key is this key on the right hand side of nine. Okay, again, I'm going to have two versions of it, directly hitting this key and using the control key. And I'll tell you why. Uh, when I'm on the calculator page, 
And if I hit that key, the key to the right hand side of nine, okay, it gives me a list of templates, you know, a template for um, uh, for a division sign, a fraction, you know, a rational function, whatever I want to enter, okay. Uh, if I go back to that, I have a template for, let's say, a ma uh, matrix. Yeah, that's a three by three. Can you see created that matrix? And you can you can create whichever size you want. You can enter the elements there. I'm not going to enter anything. I just wanted to show that uh, uh, key that gives you all the templates. There's templates for sequence and series, uh, derivative, second derivative, nth derivative, definite integral, uh, absolute value function. So this becomes my number four favorite key. But when I hit Control and that key. I use, use the key in conjunction with the control. It gives me something special. First, I'll show you what that uh, what that symbol is. Okay, this is the symbol, and this symbol is called the assign symbol. Whether you're an IB student or whether you're an IGCC student, this key, remember this key. This is going to be one of the most important keys that you will use for your exams. Okay, it's called the assign key. Let me give you an example. Suppose you want to store f of x as some expression. Uh, assign key, you can use that. I'll just enter some uh, function x plus two and it'll say done. And now when I want to evaluate the function uh, at some point 0, 0.0002, rather than just plugging in those values and substituting, you can just hit that and it should give you the value, okay? Uh, this time it's rounded off to 3SF, I believe, so it gives you the value. But the assign key is so powerful that if I go on the graph page and if I just hit F, can you see it becomes bold? That means the calculator is reading it as saying, hey, this is the memory, I recognize f. And I just enter f of x and it should give me the graph of f. So if I enter another function, if I define another function and I just say, okay, that control, the key to the right hand side of nine, don't forget this. I just make this, let's just make this a, um, a rational function this time. Okay, so I'm just going to call x over x minus one. All right, so we've got two functions. And now if I want something like an f of g of say 0 0.2, all right? Can you see both F and G became bold because the calculator recognizes, the handle, I'm sorry, the handle recognizes that F and G are in the memory, they're stored in the memory, and there, once you just hit enter, you'll get the value of F of G of 0 0.2. So this key, the key to the right-hand side of nine, whether you use it directly to get the templates, or whether you use it in conjunction with the control key, becomes my number four favorite key. My fifth favorite key, to the right hand side of the key that we just spoke about. It looks like a book on your keypad. It's called the catalog. Okay, so if you hit that, you'll have many versions of the catalog. In this first list, you've got all the functions that are there on the uh, handheld. If you go to the second list, the second one, here it is organized according to the menu. So you can go, yeah. I'll just close this one. I can go on any particular menu. I can just go on list and then under list there'll be uh, the functions that are under list is math and then you know the syntax for min is given here all right so min can be expression one comma expression two and these are actually syntax related to statistics so a good way to know your syntax if you are stuck somewhere and you don't know what it is you don't have to call your friend and here it is the other thing the other other cool thing here in the same uh, key is this conversion assistant okay so number three if you hit that you can convert any anything that you're looking for, whether it's length or area or volume from any dimension, let's look at length. So if you want to convert from meter to, let's say, you know, inch, you know, you can use this, it goes to your calculator page. And if you put some number here, if you had something like two meters and you want the two meters calculated in inches, there you go, that's your answer. So I think this becomes my fifth favorite key on the TI Inspire graphing calculator. So here's a wrap up. First key, the home key. I gave you the reasons for that. Second key, the dock key. The third key is the menu key, the lighthouse. The fourth key, the key to the right of right hand set of nine, I don't know what to call it, I've always called it. It's actually called the template key, but you can also use the control and the template key to give you the assign key. That's very powerful, don't forget that. And then the catalog key. So those are my top five favorite keys on the TI Inspire graphing calculator. Tell me about your favorite keys on the comments. I'll see you in the next video.